fucking goes wild. Anyways. Man, I am afraid. Man, man, that's a... That sure is a clown. Of cult and capped evasion. Volume 16. You crash landed on Alternia 16 long episodes ago. Sometimes you feel like you've been here forever. I know the feeling. You've had many adventures and met many Alternians. Some, all, none, of whom have become your friends. But now, for some reason, you have a hunch that you're near the end of your Alternian travels. Fuck, dude. For one thing, you seem to be coming to the edge of the populated region you've been walking through all the time you've been here. For another, the intense craving that has animated you throughout your journey feels like it might be waning. Oh no. It's not quite gone, but like a diner who stuffed himself to bursting but is still seeking that last sweet morsel that will make his meal complete, you're still on the prowl for a very sweetest morsel of friendship. Hello. <laughs> Joke's on you guys. I'm saving Marvis for last. Okay. <laughs> I should have grabbed more water before I came over. Damn it. I'll get some during the... During the break when we move on. <clears throat> the night has turned foggy. You can't see far in any direction. But you seem to be surrounded on every side by bare ground. Hummocked and pitted almost like a weird abstract sculpture and covered with greenish moss. Based on... Oh, it's... Oh, it's animated. I didn't even notice. Based on the experiences you've had with Alternian flora, you imagine the moss is probably poisonous, acidic, explosive, or something of that nature. Oh, there's like animations. Wow. Suddenly a shadow looms up out of the darkness, making you jump. But it's only a leaning signpost. As you move closer, you can see that the sign says, Welcome to Happy Abs Happy Absence Pit Park. Before you can figure out what that might be, you hear a voice muttering to itself in the fog. It sound like a dirt bee. It sounds like a dirt bee shoveled. I am. I, uh... Alright. Wait, hold on. Sorry, check the credits right away, but I wanna. Marvis is done by somebody new. So your dad did Fazer, huh? Okay. So Aisha's dad did Fazer, guys. We're in for an adventure. I I want to do I, I I if I do the voice that I want to do for Fazer. Shovel, shovel, toil and trouble, low bloods of the world unite. You move cautiously towards the voice until the figure of a troll emerges from the fog. It seems to be digging in the hard bare ground. There's often a tide that <laughs> there is a tide in the affairs of trolls which. Taken at the flood leads on to the workers' paradise. Clear your throat, and the troll turns swiftly. Who's there? Who's there, I say? You announce soothingly that you're just a poor, wayfaring stranger. Not a ghost or any nonsense like that? Confirm that you are not. Good, because I don't believe in him. I'm a dialectical materialist. Well, if you're not a ghost, who are you? Bad voice, but okay. Well, get used to it. You explain that you're a humble alien who recently, well, not so recently, landed, well, crashed on Alternia, and who's been looking ever since for... Here you blushingly trail off into a mumble. Troll snorts and comes close to study you. His breath is not the freshest. An alien? Well, you are the color of cheese, but it could be makeup. You could be a high blood in disguise. Come to watch the poor little father veilless pursuing his humble profession of pit protruber for some unknown reason of your own. Perturber. Good. Pfizer rubs at the exposed skin of your arm to see if its makeup will come off. It doesn't, but he's still suspicious. 
real alien would know what outer space is like. Describe outer space to me. LGBT stands for let's get this father. That makes sense. You describe attacks. You describe attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion and watching sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. You express the belief that all these moments will be lost in time like tears and rain. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why did that... Why did that sound familiar? Why did that sound familiar? Damn it. His authentic depictions seem to satisfy Fawzer. He nods his head and seems to think. He doesn't appear to be a fast thinker. Finally, he seems to have an idea. Do the cheese entity where you come from have a strong consciousness of class struggle? Was that Blade Runner? Holy shit, was that Blade Runner? Oh my god. Tears and rain. Yes. Oh my god. Holy shit, I just watched Blade Runner again the other day. I literally just, like, yesterday I rewatched Blade Runner again. I fucking love, I love Blade Runner. Jesus Christ. I was like, why does that sound so familiar? You have no idea what he's talking about, but you're always good at guessing the right answer in multiple choice tests. You assure him that the people who, where you come from, have a strong consciousness of class struggle that they use to jack up their cars when they get flat tires. A big smile overspreads Fazer's face, and he pumps his fist in the air. Pleased to meet you, comrade alien! All power to the workers! I imagine that finding me performing the honest labor of the working class makes you feel right at home. You sure him that's... You sure him that it does? I suppose that you wish you could share in the simple... proletarian joys and sorrows of the alternate oppressed classes. I know, I wish I could do Russian accent, but I can't. I'm bad at Russian accent, so we're doing this. Not sure what proletarian means, but sharing joys and sorrows sounds like a hopeful prelude to friendship. So you say you were just thinking that you would like to share that kind of joy and sorrow. I, I can't do Russian. I'm not good enough to do Russian. <laughs> Easily done, comrade! Here, take this soil perturbation <laughs> lance. You can enter into solidarity with the alternative working class right now. No, don't thank me. Freedom, brotherhood, equality is my motto. Conduct your perturbations right here, if you please. Points to where he was shoveling, and you begin shoveling there, too. Speak, Comrade Fazer. The moss that covers the ground is tough as leather, and the Alternian... Uh, good. The Alternian soil is rocky, hard, and unforgiving. No surprise there. Before long, you're sweating profusely, but no exertion is too great for the pursuit of friendship. Fazer watches you labor with brotherly satisfaction. Class solidarity is a wonderful thing, isn't it? From each according to his ability, to each according to his need. You look like a walking cheese, but your muscular development is impressive. So, just to pass the time while you labor in solidarity, what do you think of our planet? What has been your impression of it from your visit from outer space? I'm making him a communist. I hope that's okay. <laughs> See, I would... I have no problem doing a Russian accent, but it, it wouldn't last long. Like, I can't keep it up. It, like, turns into other voices, so... Just to pass the time... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. What are we picking, guys? Too. Okay. It's by far the worst place you've ever seen or heard of. The feeling comes over you suddenly that nothing can be more important than the truth. Truth is that foundation of all real friendship. Truth sets you free. Honesty is the best policy. 
So you take a deep breath and say that you hope you won't give offense, but that in your opinion, Alternia is the nastiest, ugliest, cruelest, most inhospitable, and most unfair place you've ever seen or heard of in a long life of travel and study. Even the planets are, plants are bloodthirsty. Even the soil is hard and mean. You've made some many no friends here, but you've heard it's also possible to make friends with lions, bears, and killer whales and other wild and dangerous creatures. In fact, often here in Alternia, you've felt that you've been locked in a cage with a bunch of such wild and dangerous creatures. As you've talked, you've been watching Fawzer anxiously for signs of anger. You're surprised to see that instead he seems to be loving it. Sorry. Ugh. Ugh. Man, I wish I got more sleep today. What about our political system? You've already put your foot in it. So you go ahead and put the other one in, too. Express the opinion that a violent, rigidly stratified, insectile social structure created solely to generate soldiers for a mad project to conquer the entire galaxy might raise eyebrows in some quarters. You admire natural selection and survival of the fittest as much as the next person. But this is overkill on a titanic scale. As he's been speaking, Fawzer's smile has grown wider and wider. He's shown other signs of approval, such as jumping up and down and whirling around. He pumps his fist into the air. Forward to perfect socialism! Um, so good to talk to someone who hasn't been hypnotized from the wriggler hood with the counter-revolutionary pack. Someone who sees conditions on alternative for what they really are. Who sees the evil of the high bloods. Someone who will march into the vanguard of fire, workers' revolution, <laughs> and <laughs> to face unflinchingly the onslaught of the aristocrats. Aristocrats. I always get that word. Right Aristocracy? I guess. Perhaps, nay, probably to die in a hail of bullets. Never turn back on the people. This is nuts. This is, this is comrade. Oh, uh. Let me embrace you, comrade alien! He does so. He's oily and smells like mossy soil and poor ooze. But this does not dampen your spirits. What better preamble for making a suggestion of friendship? Agreeing with people about politics never fails to bring friendship closer. But before you can bring it up, Fawzer, having first kissed you on both cheek, continues. But we mustn't allow our celebration of the people's revolution to interfere with the honest labor that, enable, that ennobles us. I am holding you back from your ticket to the workers' paradise. Please proceed with your soil perturba perturbation. All power to the people. Death to arbitrary homospectral discrimination. Forward, comrade! He waves his hand with a flourish, and you start digging again. You wonder if it would just be as revolutionary if he treated places so Fawzer could do the digging and you could do the speechifying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yawning so much. Oh, God. But you don't want to disturb the perfect harmony now existing between the two of you. Instead, you use your little available breath to inquire what all this soil perturbation is in aid of. Why, a coal pit, of course. Don't you see the sign? This is the Happy Absence Pit Park, Fawzer Valus, pr proprietor. There's a clown concert being held not too far from here, so I anticipate a brisk demand shortly. Best to be ready for these things. Having a lot of dead clowns lying around rotting on the property is unpleasant, not to mention unsanitary. Get them underground pronto is our motto here at the Happy Absence Pit Park. You're wondering privately whether a little class solidarity couldn't be extended to Purple Bloods. Remembering your dear friend... Aisha, did your dad do a type? Did your dad do a typo? Aisha, I think your dad did a typo. Kit Kat. Kit, Kit Kat. Kit Kat Perumbo. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty funny. It's pretty quality. Oh, shit! <laughs> That's great. Um, your friend... <laughs> Kit Kat Perumbo. 
when Fraser seems to give a jump. No, that is not ghosts. Grateful for an excuse to stop digging, you turn to look in the direction Fazer is staring. Leaning on your soil perturbation lance, you don't see anything but fog. You ask what is not ghosts. Nothing is. I am a dialectical materialist. If any ghosts come around the happy absence pit park, they should be aware that I won't believe in them, so they might as well go somewhere else. You confess that you don't see anything but foggy darkness and humped and pitted ground, where you now guess piles of cold Alternian's exoskeletons are buried in the coal pits. But you don't see any ghosts because there's no such thing. But the past few nights, I thought I saw beams of light shining up out of the ground. Kit Kat Perumbo. Oh my god. What is happening? Almost as if metaphorically, of course... Some of the exoskeletons in the coal pit had gotten hold of some flashlights and were shining them up through chinks in the soil. Look, there it is again. Oh, shit. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This time you see it. A column of light that flashes up through the fog and is gone, seeming to come from a crack in the ground, which it briefly illuminates in blinding white. Fascinated, you move towards the crack, which is now dark and invisible again. What are you doing? You look at Fazer in surprise. He seems to be terrified. You ask tactfully whether he doesn't think you ought to go see what it is. For example, it could be some infrastructure malfunction that could blow the happy absence pit park and all of its inhabitants living and dead sky high. You're not even sure they have infrastructure in Alternia, but one can't be too careful. Well, maybe you're right. We are fearless revolutionary cadres, after all. You can hear his teeth chattering. You move toward when you think the flash came from. Fazer close behind you, peering over your shoulder. Can't help but wondering where he'll be when he'll where he'll be the vanguard of his revolution is braving hails of bullets. You very much hope that his revolution, if it ever comes around, won't happen while you're around. This music gives me like Fallout vibes. No! No! This music gives me Bioshock vibes! Just then, a whole series of lights flash silently up from the ground, making columns through the fog. Fazer jumps and howls behind you. Not existent! You tell him there's undoubtedly a logical explanation. Oh my god, we're Scully. Though you just have to admit they had a weird feeling just now when the lights appeared. Like a momentary dizziness or feeling of discontinuity. Why can I not say this all of a sudden? Discontinuity. But you're more cautious, curious than ever now, murmuring comforting things to Fazer. You start digging right around where the lights you saw came from. But then it's weird, because you break through some kind of thin crust, as if the soil in that particular place is just a few inches thick over a brittle surface that your shovel goes right through like old pottery. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Be right back. Hi, sorry. Did I just get a follow from somebody named Zebra Lover sixty nine? Man, the world is something. Uh, you wonder whether you inadvertently dug into an old coal pit. What could bright light be doing coming out of an old coal pit? In some weird way, it doesn't feel like a coal pit. It feels like something metaphysical. Like reality itself is particularly thin right in that spot. And you've broken through the very fabric of it with your soil perturbation lance. Dig around the edges of the hole, enlarging it until it's about a foot wide. Darkness within makes the darkness of Alternian night seem bright by comparison. It's so dark that the soil falling into it is, and the part of your soil perturbation lance poking into it seem to vanish completely. Did I just re I read that twice. Good. And as if the other side of the hole, reality itself gave out. You and Fazer stare curiously down into this hole. Suddenly, a blindingly... 
blinding but strangely blank light bursts up out of the hole and into your faces. And at the same time, there's a deafening sound, which seems like to vibrate the very framework of reality, like a gigantic needle scratching, 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 a gigantic record. Girl, it's... You're staring in the foggy... You're gonna groundhog day me, huh? Y'all gonna groundhog day me? We're gonna have a groundhog day adventure? We're gonna have ourselves a groundhog day, huh? Standing in the foggy night, holding a soiled retribution lance that has been handed to you by Faz or Valus. He points to where he's just been digging, and you begin digging in the same place. The moss that covers the ground is tough as leather. The Altanian soil is rocky, hard, and unforgiving. No surprise there, and before long, you're sweating profusely. But you feel strange. Like you were just standing somewhere else, doing something else, seeing something else. The afterimages of blinding light and deafening sound seem to linger in your eyes and ears. But around you is the... Uh, God damn it. Why? Why? It's just a linger in your eyes and ears, but around you is nothing but dark fog and bare ground humped and pitted. You must have had a dizzy spell. You shake it off and begin perturbing the soil. No exertion is too great for the pursuit of friendship, after all. Pfizer watches you with satisfaction. Honest work is a wonderful thing. All hail the old regime, eh? You look like a walking cheese, but you're muscular yet. Sorry. I mean, we already read that, but... What do you think of our planet? What has been your impression of it? Huh. I know, we were just talking about my records. Huh. So... I don't know. Do we pick two again, guys? What do you think? Let's make a save. Our third save of the entire fucking series. Uh, let's pick two again. Let's see if anything's different. Wait, whoa. What? Wait. It's different. It's different. Holy shit, it's different. No doubt you could have anticipated that blunt honesty like this would give offense. And indeed it seems to have done so. As you finish your remarks, Fazer is frowning darkly. So, you've come to Alternia as an uninvited guest, only to criticize and judge our civilization, eh? No, no. You know enough about our society, our billions of years of evolution, and painstaking rise from mud-dwelling insectile ancestors, the political and sociological theories of our statesmen, philosophers, and scientists to make those judgments, do you? Well, no doubt you've done studies establishing what would have happened in the hemospectrum groups were placed in different relations to one another, if, for example, rust bloods were the highest group and fuchsia bloods were the lowest? Well, no, but... I suppose your planet is so similar to Alternia that you have a firm basis on which to apply to your preconceptions to us. Not at all, but... Surely you aliens are similar enough biologically and physiologically to trolls to know how we feel about our own society? Um, I thought not. I guess from the very first that you were nothing but a... A dilettante, faux, socialist, pseudo intellectual spout in your ivory tower theories without least idea what you were talking about. Well, smarty pants alien, I suggest that you take your cheese lack person and your theories home to your own planet. It won't be long before her most high imperial condensation conquers your arm of the galaxy so we can Alternians can return the favor by standing in judgment over your society and politics. In the meantime, I bid you good Siderium. For people asking if they missed Marvis, no. We haven't gotten to Marvis yet.
This is crazy. With that, Foster Valus seizes a so perturb... Keep getting fucked up on that. Perturbation Lance. As well as your hopes and dreams. Ba 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 Stalks off into the foggy night. God, me, me too. Me too. Game up. Wait, he's flipping him off! He's flipping him off! I was looking at I was I was looking at MSPA reader. I didn't notice that he was flipping us off. Holy shit. Wow. Get fucked. Hmm. So this is an interesting one. Here, let's reload. You suppose it's no worse than a lot of places, with some good points and some bad. As a guest, it's only polite to say nice things about your host's home planet. Besides, meeting Fozzer has stalked your desire for a sweet friendship morsel. And a little praise and flattery often kills me. Just, just kills me. No. Praise and flattery often goes a long way to make people like you. So with the little breath you have spare from your digging, you tell Fozzer that you found Alternia most interesting. Fierce rush of life here induces a solitary wakefulness. A boredom is virtually unknown. Also, the social structure arising from the hemospectrum and multidimensional relationship matrix is very unusual, producing a fascinating array of possible interactions among people. You're looking forward to the day where you can tell your grandchildren about it. As you're speaking, a satisfied smile overspreads Fazer's face. I'm glad you recognize the nobility of our ancient society with its orderly hierarchy and naturally evolved degrees of privilege reflecting naturally evolved degrees of ability. <laughs> you're pleased that your words have met with approval, or are you still a little troubled? You have an odd deja vu sensation that this whole exchange could have gone quite differently. Maybe even did go quite differently sometime in the past or in a parallel universe. Inquire timidly whether the total domination of the lower bloods by higher and alternia doesn't sometimes feel like an oppression. Never! I myself am only a rust blood, so I lack the privileges of the higher bloods. The most important thing in a society is that everyone should be in their appointed place and do the things they're suited for. We live in a society. All the passengers in a rowboat keep their seats in a row in the same direction, but will quickly reach its destination. But if the passengers all jump and start running around and grabbing each other's oars, the boat will capsize and we'll all be lost. We live in a society. You remark diplomatically that Alternia isn't a rowboat rowing towards a destination. You're wrong! A planet is very much like a rowboat advancing through the black water of space. As for our destination, all of us in Alternia aim at but a single goal. Every hour of every day to serve her most high imperial condensation and conquering her glorious galaxy wide empire. Long live the Empress. He was a con. He was a communist. Something happened. Yeah. He got scratched up. Well, you suppose the sense of being part of something larger than yourself makes up for a lot. It does! Naturally, evolved systems are almost more robust than artificially designed ones. They are! And it's true that Alternia's social structure does bring some semblance to the order of a collection of 12 disparate troll subtypes. It is! Fazer beams at you fondly. There's nothing that warms your heart like someone who thinks you're right about everything. So wonderful to find someone, even someone, who looks like a piece of cheese. Oh, even someone who looks like a piece of cheese, who is so intelligent and understands society and politics so perfectly. Finally, a true friend. Huh. Huh. That was, uh... It wasn't... 
I'm not. I'm not going to say it was. Dis- it was a disappointing um, chapter because it wasn't. But I really left a lot more questions than answers. Unsurprisingly. Yeah, I'll pick choice one. I think choice one's going to be unions to death, but we'll check it. That was, uh... Hmm. Alright. Okay. I love that auto-skip. Love that auto-skip. It's great. Just skip... Who needs to read? Who needs to read? Okay. Okay, we already read all this. Wakefulness. You're looking forward to the day where you can tell your grandchildren about it. Foster doesn't look as pleased as you'd hoped. So, Alternia, you find Alternia agrees with you. Oh yes, very much you pant. You find it interesting and fascinating. Definitely. To you, the spectacle of those who happen to have been born with certain blood colors exploding and oppressing those who just have not as a picturesque detail. Well, you wouldn't go as far as to... You find nothing objectionable when the society... We live in a society where the strong kill the weak at will based on nothing more than the color of bodily fluid, where the upper classes see the lower as a little more than inanimate objects. Skip that. Carcat Perot, there he is. Well, the upper class to see the lower is little more than inanimate objects whose only purpose is to serve them. Where the whole corrupt society is structured solely to breathe common fodder with the psychotic empress's mad plan to conquer the entire galaxy. More peoples to oppress. I mean, it was funny as hell, Aisha. It's it's not a problem. I understood. I understood. It was just, I, I was like, oh yeah, this has got to be a typo. But it was, it was funny as hell. It certainly wasn't what you. While the streets run with rust, orange, and gold blood, you stand unconcernedly and remark how interesting and fascinating Alternia is. While in the fish people and their bluish lackeys strike the pap from the mouths of low blood wrigglers, you smile pleasantly and remark how unusual Alternia is. Certainly not, but one can't judge other cultures by one's own. Oh, you can't dodge your class responsibility that way, you cur. You so-called intellectuals try to hide your fawn and servility to the bosses by pretending to view society objectively, without moral judgments, when all the time you're simply crypto-imperialist lapdogs. But you come to the happy absence pit park, pretended solidarity with the oppressed. Pshaw! I see now that you're nothing but a cat's paw of the oppressor class. Nothing but a cheese-colored Judas Isariah Is- Is- sent as a spy, traitor, bootlicker, psychophant, murderer, monopolist, profiteer, slave trader, cannibal, parasite, technocrat, gangster, ectoplasm. Oh no, you try to object, but Fazer seizes the shovel and from you and turns away. Turncoat, narc, double crosser, weasel, hijacker, vulture, visigoth, <laughs> breathalyzer. You watch his back recede into the fog, your heart sinking with the wreck of your hopes and dreams for friendship. Bum, bum, bum. Well, that was Fazer. Yeah, you missed um, Fazer's good root. Wow. That was, um... That was something. No, I like Fazer. That was... Man. Man, that was confusing. Man, that brought up a lot of questions. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. I'll be right back.
Oh, is it Darian Lonk next? It better be Darian Lonk. If we if we get Darian Lonk do you, in one fucking story. By the way, shout out to Daya who might have started work. I think Daya is gonna lose their shit if if fucking Darian Lonk come out. All right, all right. So here's what I've heard about this clown. He's got big tits. That's what I've. Heard. This is what I've heard. And, and everyone wants to fuck him. And I'm scared. I can't wait until we fucking get past this man. Oh, oh, he's so disturbing. Oh, oh, please. Everyone, 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 settle down. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, my God. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, good Lord. Okay. I don't know what voice I'm going to do, though. Ah. Uh, 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 I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay, let's go. Alright, let's go. Everyone, calm the fuck down! This isn't going to help, but I'm turning on slow chat for eight seconds. Okay. Find yourself. I'm not going to be able to read this chat because it's a, it's a. No, d doodles. If you ban every fucking ho thirsty horny chat member, we're going to have like three people left. All right. Find yourself ambling down the road without any particular destination in mind. It seems you don't have to do much active searching to land yourself into varying combinations of adventure slash and, and or disaster. Where will the vicissitudes of fate next lead you? Who knows? You walk for a while like that. You've just about lost all hope of running into a wacky contrivance when your palm husk lights up with the delightful and or foreboding sound of friendship. Someone is calling you. You're less excited to see that the person who happens to be calling you is Zebra. It's not that you dislike Zebra. Is it? Is it that we don't dislike Zebra? Pretty. I'm pretty sure it's that we dislike Zebra. Pretty sure that's it. It's not that you dislike Zebra precisely. It's just that you might struggle to rank him above literally any other troll you've ever met, including the yellow guy who loves genocide. But you're not one to leave a friend hanging. You dutifully answer the call. Ah, my good friend, you picked up. Awfully quickly, I might add. <laughs> yeah, you just love friendship. You ask Zebra why he's calling. Do I need a reason to call? Is the thrill of dialectical rep repose not cause enough to make social contact with one of my dearest adversaries slash friend? Or maybe more, depending on whatever you feel comfortable with and interested in at any given point in time. You have no idea how to even respond to that. Ha! <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you. I stand to incur material gain from your association. I need you to stay right where you are. Well, what are you going to do? Hang up? Stand right where you are and stay in the other line. You ask Zebra what he's up to, but he won't say. He tells you that he needs you to concentrate. Eventually, you notice a strange shape revolving in the distance down the road, drawing nearer slowly but steadily. After a while longer of waiting, the figure in the distance grows close enough for you to tell that it's Zebra. Oh, that's you, you say. It looks like he's riding on some kind of incredibly cursed hover segue. Yeah, I'm coming, sweetie. <laughs> I... I want to die. <laughs> hey, here's an art request for you guys. Just 
Draw a zebra falling off his fucking Segway. Ay, ay, ay. You would say it takes maybe 15 minutes or so for him to make it the entire way over on his hover scoot. There he is. He's here and he's he's vibrating. There you are! Impressed by my new ride? <laughs> oh yeah, you say. You're very impressed. I'm glad they gave... This is really funny, actually. I'm glad they gave him, like, a fucking segue. That's, like, the most appropriate mode of transformation for this fuck. I like how self-aware that this fucking game is that Zebra is just the worst. I knew you would be. I brought it out because tonight is a very special night. Or it will be if you'd be so kind as to make me the happiest troll in all of Alternia. Is he, like, proposing to you? What? Never mind. You ask him what he's vague blogging about. <laughs> what indeed? The real question of what is, what are you doing this evening? Well... It's not like you've ever had any plans to do anything besides stupidly bumble into a ludicrously ludicrous boondoggle after another. Seems like whatever he's alluding to inviting you to it probably fits the bill for being included in your long itinerary of unspecified dumbass bullshit you're bound to get embroiled in anyway. Fantastic! So, it just so happens that I managed to get my hands on two tickets to Clownfest. XX... What? Okay. And I thought, who better to take along than my dearest alien associate of unspecified nature? You have no idea what Clownfest is, but it's not off its not off to a good start with the name. Oh, I should have known you wouldn't be familiar with it. It's a little sophisticated for an off-world reprobate such as yourself. Oh. XX Rex, I got it. It's a musical festival centered around purple blood performers. Now, normally, I wouldn't trifle with the high blood entertainment, disgustingly oppressive as it is. But when you think about it, aren't clowns the most disprivileged class of them all? Uh, yay, yay, yay. You don't ask him to explain what he means by that because everyone would be really angry reading it. <laughs> Because everyone would be real angry reading it. Thank you. Thank you, Crystalline. I'm coming, sweetie. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, you drew a two testicle! I didn't even see that! <laughs> That's already so <laughs> Some quality shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, I guess my game still is set to Doom 2. Eh. Fuck it. <laughs> I'll switch it on my phone if I have time. You don't ask him to explain what he means, because it would just make everyone angry. Yep, yeah, okay. One sec, guys. I'm, I'm just going to switch my game. For some reason, I forgot to switch it from Doom to, to you know, Zebra's Doom. He's a, yeah, he's a Doom player. Oops. Sorry, I'm just fucking around now. Oh, I'm going way back. Okay. One second. This music is really good, by the way. Okay. 
Okay, edit. What are we choosing here? Two, one, two, two, one. Well, one of these is going to be instant death, don't forget. And I think it's going to be two. So we'll, we'll do one. One sec, I, I just got to change the game. Hive swap. Friend sim. Here we go. Yeah, this song does slap. Agree to toss your meaty moral body into the clown pit to get moshed to death or whatever. I knew you'd be there for me. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, I sorry, guys. I legally have to read this. What TP just wrote. Hive swap fans, we need your help. Zebra Kodak is flirting with the lowbloods again and making everyone uncomfortable by saying the rich is the most discriminated class. We are gathering an army to slay this monster, but we need weapons. Send in your credit card information so we can get the best weapons to give this thought. What he deserves. Do you think we could pay him to say that? <laughs> All right, let's go. Zemmer invites you to hop onto the back of his scooter so you can head out to Clownfest. You say you're not sure this is the most effective avenue of locomotion. Zebra tells you it's all the rage and not to be a little bitch about it. Oof. No, I didn't! I didn't see yours! Hold on, shit. <laughs> There's so many! There's so many so far of just Zebra just falling up. $50 on Patreon? That's not bad. I can get voiceover Pete to do like a fucking kill Zebra read or something. So tell me a little about, I'll tell you, let me tell you a little of my plans for tonight. Feels like the scooter is going even slower than it was when you arrived, now that it's struggling under the weight of two people. You see, my favorite rhyme juggler on the planet is going to be here tonight. <laughs> His name is Marvis Zoloto. You may have heard of him, he's pretty famous. Hey, why is he vibrating? Because we're on a, we're on a... Uh, segue. You say you've never heard of him because you're an alien. Oh, right. Well, he's only the best in all of Eternia. He came up a few sweeps back when he won first place on Slam or Get Cold. Oh, please tell me you at least know about Slam or Get Cold. You do not know about Slam or Get Cold. Well, it's a bi-sweeply reality program where aspiring Slam poets compete to prove who has what it takes. It's really cutthroat stuff. I mean, I think there are at least five decapitations a season. The competition is about skill, no matter the blood color or who's competing. The troll who wins is the troll who has the nastiest flow and dopest bars. Everyone has an equal shot. I mean, sure, a high blood has won every season to date, but it's basic biology that clowns are better at rhyming than everyone else. Oh. Even if high bloods were low bloods, that would still be true. Yeah, I want Chixie. I miss Chixie. That's equality. Ugh. Is it? I don't think it is. Yeah, it makes sense. You think this is really progressive stuff he's saying? Where could he have possibly gotten so educated and smart? Oh, you flatter me. Anyway, as you know, I'm deeply connected in the music industry. But because of my oppressive hemospectrum, because of oppressive hemospectrum systems, I'm afraid I'm only truly aff afforded downward mobility. The clown sphere is a really insular, close-knit community. But with the right hustle, I'm going to break that glass ceiling. Marvis is the perfect troll to bring me into the fold. Say this guy sounds pretty brutal. Are you sure you want to actually meet this clown? What, Marvis? Ha! <laughs> I mean, sure, he does what he needs to to survive in a rigidly ossified power system that could never be truly dismantled by the actions of a single individual. But that doesn't mean he supports it. Contrary to what you might think, Marvis is a spectacularly subversive figure in the industry. 
If you listen to his music, really listen, you'll hear some borderline revolutionary stuff. I think he'd tear it all down if he could. I might have mentioned it, but being a clown is kind of woke. Uh, uh, uh. I'm just going to lay back for a second. That's why I've always wanted to probe that think tan of his, really get to the bottom of his radical praxis, to help spread his message of social reform to the masses. Another segue art. <laughs> there's so much, there's so much art! There's so much art of his. I love Fantastically you do another one <laughs> I I I just I can't I can't there's so much I gotta, yeah, I, I, I can't, <laughs> if you want me to put these on stream, send them to me on Twitter or something, and I'll add them to the next, uh, to the next volume, okay, let's get back to the thing, I'm just fucking posting pictures, man, this is good, good fucking art, you're going to help me do it. Sorry, I'm just- I'm still looking at them. Sir, sir, me, that one's real good. After four hours- after four hours of scooting and one excruciatingly detailed, unbroken account of the events of the past three seasons of Slammer Get Cold, you're right. <laughs> Come on, Fessor Rex! Oh. I like that one. I like that hot dog one. Confess feels more like a circus than your idea of a musical festival. In the distance is a wide open field dotted with disorganized masses of people, all gathered before a nightmarish stage. You presume to be the site of evening's main event. Oh, hold on. Hold on one sec, guys. I just gotta do something real quick. All right, I'm back. The clown fest feels more like a circus than your idea of a music festival. In the distance is a wide open field dotted with disorganized masses 
of people all gathered before a nightmare stage you presume to be the site of the evening's main event. The entrance to the festival grounds open to something of a parking lot filled with whimsical tents and people selling various snacks and refreshments. You see a clown juggling what looks to be some- WHAT?! 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 <laughs> WHAT?! <laughs> I couldn't make him any smaller. <laughs> I couldn't make him any smaller. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I can't make him a little smaller. <laughs> Is that better? That's good, right? <laughs> see a clown juggling what seems to be at least seven hot dogs. Absolutely ghoulish. You're glad Diamond isn't here to see this. Zebra brings you up to the gates, flashes your tickets, and gets your wristband admitted to the festival grounds. Put him on stage, please. Put him on stage. I, ca I can't make him very small, so he's just gonna be giant on stage. Thoughtful! 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 This one chapter is going to take us a million years because I keep loading up these fucking images. Jade, you're drawing so much. How do you do it? I don't understand. Okay. Alright. Okay. Send these to me on Twitter. Or Tumblr. Or anywhere. Okay, it seems like there's still some time before the performance is slated to start. But some spectators already gathered in the field. And I accidentally skipped it. That's cool. But there are more privileged bloodcasts to line up around the tents in the lot to buy food and merchandise. While you rock around the festival grounds, you ask Zebra what exactly he has planned. What could we possibly do to get him in a good with the clowns? Zebra takes it as an invitation to whisper conspiratorially in your ear. His breath is hot and heavy against your hearing canal. That's the most... Oh. Am I supposed to do this? No. Okay. Get ready for... Get ready for AS, Zebra ASMR. Here's the plan. No. <laughs> Here's the plan, my sweet little rust drop. We get in, wait for the show to start. And then when Marvis comes out on stage, really gets into his act. You're going to jump and barricade and rush the stage. Or at least you're going to try. Of course, I'm going to stop you. I'll tackle you right before you make it to the stage, and I'll call you right in front of Marvis and everybody. What? Uh. Oh, calm down. I'm trying to tear down the stereotypes that low bloods are simple minded dullards. You aren't doing your people any favors by reinforcing the cause for prejudice. Obviously, I'm not really going to kill you. You'll simply pretend to play dead after I've heroically foiled your black designs on Marvis. My actions will firmly place me within Marvis's ashen quadrant, so I'll have no choice but to recognize me. And then the clowns will see me for what a hero I am, and praise me, and bring me backstage to reward me. It's a really flawless plan, my dear. If you just do what you're told, nothing will go wrong. Mm. I hate this plan. We haven't seen Marvis once. I think we got pranked. How do we know this isn't just a prank? You have to suffer before you can get the clown titty, huh? Oh, 
Oh, yeah, I'll call Tagora. You need a restraining order? Before you can prefer any critique of this caper, the jovial clamor of chatting and revelry surrounding you is pierced by a rising chorus of blood-curdling shrieks. You up around to ascertain the source of the dreadful sound, but it seems to become becomes quickly apparent that those were not screams of pain at all. You know what's up when Zebra joins in with the ear-splitting squeals. That's him! He's here. <laughs> Everyone settle down. Everyone in the chat, settle down. Settle down! It's the man of the hour himself. An expressively dressed juggalo making his way through the crowd, flanked by a robust team of hulking indigo bloods. Every aspect of him telegraphs unimaginable celebrity. The purposefully disheveled yet fashionable fit of his clothes, the swagger of his step, the ten-man camera crew trailing behind him. I have a voice! You guys will hate it if I do it, but I do have a voice. He walks with measured poise despite the chaos rising around him. Dozens and dozens of young trolls are flinging themselves at his entourage without any apparent concern for their safety. These bodyguards are roundhouse kicking the eager teens into the ground left and right like a bloody blender of adolescent aliens. It's pure carnage. He really knows how to draw a crowd, doesn't he? <sighs> a minute ago, it was tough to truly grasp the hype, but after seeing him in person, you don't know what it is, but this swaggy clown has an undeniable gravitas that commands the attention of everyone around him. It's impossible to look anywhere else. Even the Alternian moonlight seems to endeavor to glint off his golden accoutrements twice as bright. But he's gone just as quickly as arrived. Up to the beep, beep. Just as quickly as arrived up to the festival stage to set up his act. He leaves a bloody void in his wake. Zebra is bouncing on the balls of his feet following the encounter. <sighs> oh, God damn it. Ah, wake up. Clearly can't wait to get up into the pit, and to be honest, neither can you. What is it about this good clown that's so utterly irresistible? Zebra takes you up to the field spread out before the stage. Uh, lucky. <laughs> lucky flies. takes you up to the field spread out before the stage put him on his head no put him on Zebra's shoulder no <laughs> there are already thousands and thousands of trolls already standing around ready for the show to start from the looks of the crowds in the back breaking down in their tents they must have been rust bloods camping out for days to secure their spots but even those hard-won locations are much further to the back than Zebra was leading you. There aren't many high bloods here by comparison, so Zebra is able to take you take you to walk right in. Muscle past all the ceruleans and grab a spot by the barricade with many, maybe five minutes to spare. There are some roadies up on stage now dashing around to finalize all the equipment arrangements. Oh, shoot. Did you remember to bring your concept concert diaper? Excuse you? Zebra turns to you with wide eyes. You're awfully close together now, boxed in by the swell of trolls, pushing your bodies closer and closer to the stage. I already hate this. I already hate this. You know, your concert diaper. Mm. Mm. I already hate this. I think I want to stop playing I've Slept Friend Sim forever. Forever. <laughs> oh god, Jade, that's the scariest one yet. You actually don't know. You don't have a single clue about your concept diaper. You ask him if he's wearing his concept diaper. He pats the front of his pants. 
Which you notice are looking from. Uh, um, of course. Somebody named V made this route, which is probably just fucking Andrew Hussey. Um, of course. You can't just come to one of these things without your concert diaper. This is... This is... This is... This is the worst. This is absolutely the worst. <clears throat> this is the worst. Things in the pit can be very intense, bro. And you can't leave. Use, use the load gaper after it starts. Man, you're really going to regret not bringing your concert diaper. So everyone around us. So there's everyone around us. Ugh! Before you can attempt to formulate a response to that, the crowd breaks into thunderous cheering. Your heart skips a beat as you look up. But of course, the clown who's clambering up to the center stage isn't him. Marvis is clearly too hot to blow in the first act. All the same, people are really fired up over this raggedy juggalo. Seems to be a serviceable clown, you suppose. He's got gold chains and is reasonably swaggy. He gets bumping, drops a few bars. I actually hate this. <laughs> no, you added concert diaper to it! Jade! Jade, no! Jade didn't draw it that fast. They were, they were, it was drawn before, and then <laughs> you just added concert diaper to the drawing. It's fine, you guess, but he's not your clown. You know, the moment you laid eyes on Marvis, that he was the only clown your heart would ever be able to see again. Holy shit. Zebra leans into your ear, and that's the yell they hear over the sounds to, of the crowd. <laughs> I've never much liked Rapster Slamsey's work, to be honest. <laughs> Sure, the beats are produced well, but he has a very insipid sense of lyricism. Triz's clam this, Triz's inf... <laughs> in inf... Indefatig... Uh. We get it, you want to harpoon the Harris. Who doesn't? Honestly, we don't need to hear about it all day. <laughs> this is... Yeah, they mean Triz's phone. Oh. Oh. A solid 15 minutes of mildly provocative slams later, and old Slamsy is slinking off backstage. As soon as he's gone, a new gesture takes the floor. <coughs> if you wanted to get into music, it proves difficult. Every new act they bring onto the stage is immediately followed by a hollering earful of zebras scratching critiques, scathing critiques. You wonder why he's so fixated on getting in good with this gaggle of urban farceurs if he thinks a little of their technical art and artistic merits to begin with. As you stand lean sweatily against the barricade, you're starting to wonder if it's all worth it. Could the sight of a single rapping man really outweigh all the physical and psychic agony of waiting and standing and stewing in the heat of the pit? Will you have just endured nearly 3,000 words of hanging out with Zebra for something that will ultimately let you down? But as the penultimate clown trumps off the set, the stage of air changes. The lights on the stage go dark. The bloomy sound system goes quiet. And a tremulous hush falls over the crowd. Here he comes! Feel your heart stop in that silence. You know down to your bones that this is the moment you've been waiting for. Here he comes! There he is! <laughs> it's the bastard. From Sea Dweller to Rust Blood, nobody moves. The sound of his light footsteps against the darkened stage could only be audible to someone as close as you. The anticipation swallows you whole. When the floodlights snap back on and illuminate his astounding figure center stage, you feel it. Though yet of modest stature, the lanky juggalo has the presence of a man a million feet tall. He radiates power of the likes of which you've never felt before. You feel him inside of you intimately, religiously, inedibly. Indelibly, yes, this is it. This is your clown. Then he opens his mouth to utter what feels like the most important words you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> so, I'm gonna completely... This voice, I'm gonna give him. I'm sorry. 
Hey. <laughs> All hell breaks loose. Everyone is screaming around you. You gravitate. Sans? My Sans? Have you ever heard my Sans voice? My Sans voice is just... Hey, how's it going there, Frisk? It's me, Sans. You gave him Taco's voice? No, that's not Taco's voice. You'll hear more of it once we get to it. You're not totally wrong, though. I'm doing more of a Justin on OKKO OK voice. You grip tight in the barricade as you stare up at him, glowing. Messianic. Me Messianic. Arms outstretched to drink in the zealous fervor of the crowd, all incited by a single incredibly powerful word. Hey, God, you'll never forget it. What up, guys? <laughs> This is how he speaks. This is how he speaks. Are you jugs ready to cook? Can't help it. You start screaming. You're so fucking ready. These buddies be baking beans. Shiz. Any of y'all forget your concert diapers because it's rank out there. Feel wrecked, wracked by shame. How could you forget your concert diaper? You'll never be so foolish again. This is, but it's aight. I'm a freshen things up. You hear me? Zemmer takes hold of your hand and squeezes it tight. You appreciate the gesture. God, he's so fucking beautiful. This is the, this is this is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst. You understand, you feel deeply, utterly devastated to know how far out of your grasp he is. Why would a man like that ever look at you? There's no way someone so tremendous, so magnificent, so extravagant would waste his time offering his friendship to someone as insignificant as you. But as desolating as that feeling may be, you aren't ready to put him out of your life just yet. Maybe there are other ways you can be close to him. Listening to his music, follow him wherever he goes, dedicate your life to him. You want to know everything about him that you can. Maybe in this way you can honor him, befriend him in your own heart, if not his. Is a love one-sided any less beautiful? This is just you guys. When the speakers at last start to blast through the... When the music starts at last to blast through the speakers, you ascend. Pain in your legs and your back disappears. You feel nothing but streaming euphoria. You thank the forces of serendipity for guiding you to the glorious epiphany of this beautific singularity. Shows nothing to scoff at either. You, a highly discerning individual known to frequently make posts online regarding the quality of rap and whether or not those who propose to possess such ability do in fact have a requisite bar as they're fully blown away by the act. This is... This is... This is... This is something. Some really good stuff. He's really just going in hard and hot with his raps. Not, not that intensity. Not that intensity is the sole barometric of the quality of hip hop. The fire note is Marvis is dropping is a. The fire Marvis is dropping is a broad contemporary performance that would equally satisfy any aficionado with any relevant subgenre. Not a single thing about him is even slightly racist. You're really starting to get into the zone when you hear Zebra starts. Oh, yay, yay. Zebra starts to scream in your ear again. You're ready to already going deaf from the concert as it was. I think it's about time to get this show on the road, don't you? I'm not even gonna ask you guys. No fucking way. Are you kidding, you say? There's no way you're gonna vault over the barricade and try to make an attempt on Marvis's life, fake or not. For one thing, the plan is fucking stupid, and you'd immediately die. Second of all, Marvis is beautiful artist with the soul of a true poet. I'm not going to help anyone to attempt to exploit his celebrity for selfish purposes. You conclusively inform Zebra that he'll have to find someone else to help him hoodwink sweet Marvis. What's that? I can't hear you over all the incredibly vicious and beautiful rapping. Tell Zebra that you're not doing it. Just want to listen to the rest of the concert and enjoy yourself. Zebra seems horribly taken aback. What? But I thought we were friends. 
You reassure Zebra that you are friends, but affirming a friendship doesn't necessarily require one to embark upon a ludicrous suicide pact in order to socially hornswoggle a rhythm rhythmically gifted Mary and Drew. You hardly Thelma and Louise. Get real. You tell Zebra he needs to find someone else to help him cozy up in the clan's inner circle. Zebra harumphs, offended, and decides to go. He starts to push away through the crowd and then down the length of the barricade. And with that, you're free to turn your gaze back to this mirthful eminence and embrace in the new piece you found in his artwork. But Marvis only keeps disturbingly dope. Oh, distributing dope, and the crowd only gets rowdier. Before you know it, you find yourself being wrenched into the writhing mass, jostled about, and assumed by the transcendent power of the music. Oh, fuck, we're dead. <laughs> Your pitiful little body becomes nothing more than a note in this wicked symphony, raindrop washed away in the rapids. Some time ago, you may have accepted your fate here and allowed yourself to be trampled by the mob, but you have something to live for now. Even as you feel yourself begin to physically break, those sick beats tether you spiritually to the mortal world. The mortal world. Its ruthless bars cut through the heat and the sweat and the heavy stench of piss and meat, drawing you closer like a sailor to the siren song. Not even death could wrench you free from his grasp. He's he, nah, stop effing, he's alive! This bitch alive. You manage to muscle your way back up to the four, eh? To the four. Ah, oh, fuck. No one. Be right back. You exit the mosh pit, a shattered mess, bruised, battered, and broken, hanging on by only the most tenuous of threads. Not even death can wrench you free of his grasp. In spite of the odds, you manage to muscle your way back up to the... Oh, cool. As you look around you, you get a glimpse of your fate. Surrounded on all sides by trolls who have collapsed and been trampled dead, faces and frozen rictus of ecstasy. Given how lightheaded you feel, you aren't long for this world either, but you can carry on a bit further for him. Wow, he's really something else, that Marvis. You think as your wasted body slumps against the barricade. Okay, now he's dying. It's all you can do is lift your weak head and stare up at him. Drinking up his boundless audiovisual wonder, your vision starts to blur, and your consciousness begins to fade. Jerk back to your senses when you feel something splashing over your face. No. 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 <laughs> I I'm sorry to do this, but I'll I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I'll leave you with this.
Hmm. So this is still happening, huh? So this is still a thing that's happening, huh? What do you mean this is definitely not going to- They're not showing his penis! Cast around wildly for the source of the water to your disbelief. You see it was Marvis. He's standing at the edge of the stage, gyrating his hips to the choreography as he looks down into your concern. Starting into the- It's like staring into the groin of an angel. He waits for a break in his verse to cover his mic and mouth to you. Yo, buddy, are you alright? I can't believe how gracious he is. To see a humble fan such as yourself in pain and stop you, make sure you're okay. Is this real? Or have you passed on to heaven after all? Your gaze tracks up from his well-proportioned crotch to generous view offered by the plunging neckline of his shirt. <laughs> you're all right now. You've never been more all right in your life. Marvis jumps up the stage into that impassable purgatory that separates him from the pit. The gods from the mortals. He makes his way over to you. He stretches out his hands. Hey, babe. Want to dance? Oh, boy. Your broken bones are no obstacle. Instinct propels you over the barricade and into his arms. He catches you like you've both been waiting your entire lives for this moment. You've never more felt more warm and safe. He scoops you up with his incredible strength and carries you back onto the stage. Marvis is talking into his mic again, so his words reverberate through the entire field. Look what we got here! Seems like a freaking low blood cut to the front of my line, friends. The remainder of the crowd is still conscious, moves viciously. What? What's happened? Oh, you're clearly bleeding red from the stomp in the face several times in the mosh pit. In the murky lights of the stage, it looks awfully burgundy. Heh <laughs> Someone's been naughty. Yes, yes. You've been so naughty, you say into the mic. No remorse. For damn shame. The crowd jeers. Well, we've clearly got a criminal on our damn hands. What do you think we should do with them? Any opinions? The response is disjointed, but still all functionally unanimous. Admits the clamor one word keeps ringing out clearly. Oh, I wonder what the word is. Hmm. Oh, I'm so surprised. Wow, you want me to kill him? Shit, that's brutal. Well, I ain't one to let down my fans. Justice be fucking done, my merry men. What better way to cap off a wicked night than with a little gutter blood shower? Well, you're hardly qualified to question Marvis's judgment. <laughs> If what he wants is to publicly execute you in front of the crowd of his adoring fans, I guess that's how it has to be. You surrender completely as Marvis directs the stained hands to help him erect some sort of makeshift crucifix. You don't struggle as he carries you over and ties you up, suspended above the crowd. Erect. <laughs> I just looked over at the chat and Sega Chick just said erect, and I don't know why that's just so funny to me. All the spotlights shine on you, burning hot. The audience's rapture screams deafen you. <laughs> You're wrecked. But all you can see is Marvis approaching you, ringed in otherworldly light. His back is to the crowd, and you are the only one who can see his face like this, intense, focused, merciless. A gaze meant only for you. You've never felt more special. He steps up before you, face to face. You stare into his eyes, enthralled. Such clear eyes, so potent and beautiful. Your only regret is that you can't gaze into them for longer. Marvis- Oh, shit! Uh, that's not a cane. Marvis takes hold of his cane and in a fluid motion draws out its rapier-sharp hidden blade. The metal glints a thousand colors in the light of the stage, almost as awesome as he is. You hope he strikes true. <laughs> Yours will be a magnificent death. But then he winks. A fleeting moment of understanding passes between you. Could it be that Marvis is the friend you've been searching for after all? Or is it a fool's flight and fancy that dreams so? He draws in close, rearing up as if to strike. He raises his blade, his jacket lifts up too, exposing a vulnerable clown pit. If you'd leaned in just now, maybe you could... WHAT?!
What do you mean? What, what is this? The f the fuck? <laughs> the f the f Fourth save of the entire series, right there. I'm gonna respect myself, first of all. Marvis brings down the blade. It sinks deep into the wood beside your neck. This is no accident. A gesture so powerful surely would not miss. Well, you know what's gonna happen. If you try to g be weird, you're gonna get stabbed. You're gonna move your head and you're he's actually gonna kill you. That's what's gonna happen. Sparing your life. You're so humbled that your bladder evacuates on the spot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Your urine is as hot in your legs as Marvis's. Oh my God, why? What is this shit? This is the worst chapter. This is the worst chapter ever. You really wish that you'd write your concert diaper. Marvis gives you a look, then glances pointedly at to his cane sword. Take the hint and make an exaggerated reaction like you've just been stabbed for real. Grab at your neck, sputtering, flailing. The high bloods right at the front can tell you haven't been really stabbed. And they're a little disappointed, but it's not as clear to the trolls further back. Somewhere around the mass of teal bloods, the illusion really hits home. They start going fucking bonkers back there. The apeshit wave travels back to the burgundies. And then ricochets back home to the high bloods. Crack one eye open as you play dead. This time, it's nothing like the controlled moshing during the performance. This is pure anarchy, a whirlwind of death and brutality. Trolls are at each other's throats, literally ripping each other apart with fang and claw. <laughs> Jade, that's real good. Jade, that's real fucking good. All the blood spraying into the air makes humidity really skyrocket. At some point when the racket becomes less than melodic, the clowns all come out for a final encore to drown out the sounds of the screaming. They start wrapping up a real storm. After about 45 seconds, a full two-thirds of the crowd are completely dead on the ground. The performance finally ends once every single troll in the crowd has collapsed either from death or exhaustion. Only once the audience has worn itself out do the clown clowns call it quits. They all start filling backstage, but for Marvis, who stops to take you down from the cross. Your beloved clown cradles you in his arms like a P the Pieta, gently petting your blood-splattered face. You hanging in there, fam? Tell him yes while continuing to play dead. You don't want to foil his ruse. Okay, gravy. Picks you back up and carries you off to the stage. Clowns have a little green room set up in the backstage venue where they're all mixing and relaxing after the show. No one seems concerned to see Marvis carrying it in a 90% dead alien. Or particularly rattled after witnessing thousands of trolls savagely cannibalize each other either. Hey, you want a sandy? A what? A sando. You're sorry? Grub bread. Oh, sandwich. <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> you say, yeah, you're sure. You're pretty hungry. Marvis drops you off on the couch and you lounge indulgently as you wait for him to walk up to the catering table and pick you something up. Back quickly. Think you can move your arms or nothing, buddy? I say not really. Pretty sure all of your bones are basically obliterated. Oh, shiz, that's rough. Sorry, man. Guess that's my fault. Okay, say, uh. Oh, say, uh. Don't even question it. You bay him unthinkingly. Uh. You nearly choke when he kneels beside you and starts pressing broken off pieces of grub sandwich past your trembling lips. Tears well up in the corner of your eyes. How could someone like you be so lucky to, t to touch and be held by the closest thing this mortal plane to a god? You know what? He oh. That's just going to make you guys so mad. The, his... His, his quirk... It reminds you of that one fucking guy, that one video where he's like, uh, I'm gonna put on my hood. No, I'm gonna take it off. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that guy. 
What's poppin'? <laughs> yeah, that guy. That's that's what his quirk is. That's what his quirk is. No, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Put my hood up. No, I'll take it back down. <laughs> if someone can find the video, please like it. You sure there are thousands, millions of trolls out there who would like to die to get experience anything like this. It's humbling. What did you do to deserve this? You're so weak from the concert that even moving your jaw is hard. Your star stricken sobbing doesn't help either. Whenever a slappy bit of grub paste filling dribbles down your chin, Marvis is right there to catch it and shove it back into your eager maw. Christ, this is... This is... Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna share this video. Quite possibly the worst video in, like, history, maybe? I... I... Listen... Whoops. <laughs> Didn't know this was on. <laughs> Fuck. It's popping. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. It's lit in here, huh? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not playing anymore. I hate this fucking video. Just look at what's popping if you want to see it. It's awful. But that's how he talks. <laughs> this is quirk. <laughs> Whoa! Put my hood up. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that voice. <laughs> oh, uh, he makes un unyielding eye contact with you. We gotta finish this fucking arc. We've been on this one fucking character for like two hours. <laughs> He makes unyielding eye contact with you as he allows you to suck the maggoty meal from his fingers. You tell him he's beautiful. See, now I kind of want to do the... Hold on. I gotta... I gotta, I gotta think of this. Hold on. This route is about 3,000 words longer than the rest of them? Seriously? Jesus Christ. Wow, okay. A lot of people say that. I don't know about all that, though. I'm just a humble rhyme juggler with a lot of cash money and ten guys filming what I'm doing right now. When you're finished eating your sandwich, Marvis kindly wipes the mess off your face. He's so gracious, you can't believe it. I'm so glad that the camera crew is here to capture all of this so you can watch it and relive the experience of receiving his kindness again later. You guess you did need an you guess you need an answer to the question. Why did Marvis decide to save you? Marvis takes a moment to think on it. Well, I guess I saw the guy you was. And I was like, shit. What a sorry motherfucker. No. You know that buddy was bad. Be bad news. Oh, you know that, buddy. Be bad news, fam. What, Zebra? No way. Zebra's your friend. All of your friends are cool. Dan, because that's raw. You okay? You sick? You friends with that ing dingalong? <laughs> in, in dingalong. He hates Zebra. Guys, he hates Zebra. He knows. I've changed my mind completely. I love Marvis. You know he's blacklisted all the fucking way up Clown Town. What? Really? Why? He's a social climber, man. That big blue buddy be a perfect fucking power... Parasite... Fuck. I can just... Uh, uh, <laughs> and he's blacklisted by all clowns? He doesn't seem to know that. It is! It's turning into Tommy! That's what it is! Haha. <laughs> well, we ain't about to go and tell his chatty ass. Ha <laughs> ha. Come to go write the wicked nasty review about my, my business. Do you understand life? I'm not gonna do a Tommy voice, but just consider. 
to understand life? Do you? Lisa. Lisa, please. Kill my everything. You're tying me apart, Lisa. If you've never seen the room, highly recommend it. I've seen it about 20 times. We be looking out for ourselves, us clowns, real close knit, you know. Take care of each other and all that shiz. You feel me? You know, if you think about it, clowns really are the most disprivileged socio epic. Wait. Dis. Under. Disprivilege? Wait, what do you mean? Does. Does he mean. You've thought about that. It's making more sense recently. You'd love to engage in nuanced discourse with him about clown privilege and lack thereof. Yeah, because though we nominally occupy a position of structural power in the institutional hierarchy of the hemospectrum, we'd be subjugated into dampening our powers like no other. Because the agents of the Empress in her abysmal... <laughs> this is a lot. This is a lot. All of a sudden. Because the agents of the Emperor... I'm just going to read this normally. I can't even fucking do a voice. This is just... Look at this fucking quirk. Look at this fucking quirk. Because the agents of the Empress in her abysmal hierarchy know that the unimpeded strength of me and my sick, nasty buddies, uh, wild, easily unseat sea dwellers as dominant cast. It's... Purple Bloods be objectively superior to Violet in every metric of strength, power, and influence, despite chromatically preceding them. And the only reason we don't rise up and rip the fins off their slimy little faces is an eternity of religious persecution and culturally immutable precedent. Well, I mean... I like Marvis. I wouldn't mind seeing him rip, rip some fucking sea dwellers to shreds. How do we know the clowns wouldn't be better? What does it say about the validity of the rest of the system? You consider your mind thoroughly blown. Well, this guy's incredibly woke. Not, not the least bit racist at all. You're really inspired by how a good... Man. You're really inspired by how good he is, both an artist and a man. I... It, it's fucking... MC is completely hypnotized, though. Damn straight. Maybe all this spectrum needs is a little chaos to shake things up. Really makes you fucking think. You hear me? God, you do hear him. It makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. You make so much sense. Together. Marva smiles at you, and you as you hold his hands. You don't want to let go. You're afraid you'll never see him again if you do. You're not sure you can live like that. Maybe you can't always be by his side, but maybe sometimes, occasionally, all you want to make is a friend. Fucking course I'll be your buddy, buddy. Here, why don't you add me a cheddar? Oh, shit. Next time, I got a show. Maybe I'll hook you up with some wicked tickets. V.I. fucking P. B. Arrest emperors represent Jesus Christ. <laughs> Cyberwolf, no. Make sure to check out my link in the bio for merch if you're interested. Promise fills you with so much hope and light and joy. You can't believe it. You did it. You made the greatest, most ultimate friend of them all. Your shining light. Your reason for being. Marvis, the truest buddy you've ever had. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> the greatest, most ultimate friend. Hey, what about Polypa? Fuck you. Yeah, that's over. Don't forget, we haven't gotten the bad ending yet. <laughs> we haven't even gotten the instant death ending! This just took like three hours to get through one!
Oh my god. I know, we gotta take the fucking whiff. I'll do that now. We're just gonna be killed. Watch. Watch, we're just gonna be killed. Can't help yourself. You lean right into the clown's swampy armpit and breathe in deep. Uh, oh, oh. Sound is like nothing you want to... I don't want to read this. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. You sniff and then you snuff. Suck. Uh. Uh. Ah, uh. uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. You imagine some poor Let's Player having to read every delectable sentence of these odiferous paragraphs aloud and get a little hot and bothered. Yeah? You aren't quite that brave. Marva springs down the blade. It sinks deep into the wood. Bes oh. I didn't get killed. Did that one was for you. Uh. Uh. Sparing your life. Wait. Okay. So is this just the same, but I sniffed this pit? What the fuck? <laughs> is this just the same, but instead I just... Sniff this pit? What? Okay. Great. 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 <laughs> well, no, there's a bad end. We just haven't gotten to it yet. All right, we're going to do instant death. Here he comes on his Segway again. They better fucking have him on his Segway in the end. Find something else to do that sounds less fucking awful. Well, you can't say that. The invitation isn't tempting. Going to a writhing gathering of violent gestures certainly sounds like a recipe for simulating time, but... What if you didn't throw yourself blindly into the obvious peril for once in your incredibly painful life pass? Oh. Zebra sighs heavily. He looks completely destroyed. Good. Despite you, yourself, you feel a pang of guilt in your chest. I see. I guess that's fine. I'll just have to find someone else to facilitate my brush with greatness. What is that supposed to mean? You don't bother to ask. You don't give in to his obvious guilting either. Zebra seems to accept his fate. <sighs> Whatever. Can't believe I came all this way on my hover scoot. Just to be callously rejected like this. But I guess you'll see you around, hotcakes. Zebra powers back up his little scooters, gearing up to go. But when he tries to lean back to the machine... But when he tries to lean back so the machine will start heaving in reverse, something is wrong. The scooter just won't move, no matter how many times he slaps the control panel on the handlebars. You ask if it's broken. What? No, it can't be. It's brand new. It was just working a minute ago. <laughs> Maybe it's in the wrong mode. Zebra hammers the buttons of the control panel for a bit with no luck. Damn, maybe it is the motors. Zebra tries leaning forward to check it out. In fact, as soon as he pushes his weight against the control stick, the scooter surges forward. It hit us. What? It collides with your frail human body, knocking you to the ground. There's too much momentum in the motion for Zebra to stop there. The jets underneath the scooter break over your pummeled body, incinerating you and killing you instantly. That's my favorite ending of this whole, uh, this whole, uh, this whole volume so far. <laughs> oh yeah, Lucky still, <laughs> Lucky Luciano's still down there. <laughs> and literally someone's dad. Alright. Um. So. Bad arc. I made a Marvis Luciano. You didn't. You didn't. You did not do that.
Yeah, show check Twitter. Okay. No, I got I gotta see this one. This one this one I will stop for and I will put it on the stream. What's this, Jade? Oh Jade, Jade. Jade, it's so good. Holy shit, this is so <laughs> Well, needless to say, we won't need that down in the corner anymore. Cause I got a, I got a better one here. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! There we go. All right. <laughs> Tornasol, I just I just saw your uh you, you tweeted me the zebra falling off the segway. God damn. Okay. Here we go. Final ending of the night. You go to hell before you die. Please. All right, here we go. Hold on tight, guys. We're going to be skipping for a while. Here we go. All right. Go along with Zebra's cowardly and nefarious plan to scam your beloved clown. Ah, no, 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 no. Yeah, well, a bit too late for that. <laughs> That's a good drawing. No, that wasn't. No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. No. Nope. Main menu. Yep. Don't worry about it. There's nothing. There's nothing. Don't worry about it. We'll get to it. I'm not reading the chat. I'm not reading the chat. Fuck you. Okay. I'm going to watch the skip this time. A fucking skip method. I, it sometimes shuts off and it sometimes does not. Okay, it's off. Going along with Zipper's cowardly and nefarious plan to scam you above the con. Raptured you may be with Marvis's magnificence. A promise is a promise. Can't let Zebra down. You wait for the right moment to start to vault up over the barricade as quickly as you can manage. Clear the barrier and drop down into the gutter between the stage and the crowd. Not sure where to go from there. You glance back towards Zebra for guidance. The crowd has noticed what you're doing, all right. The onlookers are swarming with rage at your insolence. Zebra makes his move. He starts to follow you up over the barricade, but things don't go as planned. Instead of, hero <laughs> Instead of heroically stopping you from making it to Marvis, Zebra is put upon from the sides of grasping claws. They don't recognize what Zebra is trying to do. They think he's just another conspirator trying to join in with your attempt at Marvis's life. You watch in stunned horror as the two trolls closest to Zebra take hold of each of his arms, dig in their claws, and rip them right off. Nice. I'm pleased with this outcome. That's the end of the- that's the end, right? This was the good end? You watch in stunned horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they don't stop there. You barely have time to process what's happening until another pair of trolls descend, helping to tear ruthlessly into Zebra's body. His screams don't even register over the booming sound system. Jesus Christ! You guys weren't kidding when you said Zebra dies! Wow! Fountains of indigo blood spray hot into the humid air. The barricade and the grounds all around you are drenched in your friend's gore. You're frozen where you stand in the arid gutter between heaven and hell. This is the good ending, right? This isn't how it was supposed to go, is it? 
feel the inevitable press of entropy closing in. The trolls in the audience see you, and they've already had a taste of blood. Your legs are as stiff as rods as the carnage cake trolls who have made short work of your friend begin to vault over the barricade themselves. It seems pointless to run. You're stricken by a consuming sense of deja vu. You've made a mistake and the universe is going to clean up your mess. The trolls drop down into the gutter with you in advance. You close your eyes and accept your fate. Then you feel yourself being wrenched up onto the stage. Yo, what's up? I can't believe your eyes. Marvis, in all his majesty, has hoisted you up to safety on the grand stage. He's beaming at you with the most beautiful smile you've ever seen in your whole life. His development has certainly given the bloodthirsty crowd pause. Marvis turns to them with an unerring grin and shakes his head. Y'all out there trying to kill my buddy? Sometimes I swear my fans are bigger clowns than I am. Doring Legion seems to find that very funny. You're starting to realize you really should have brought your concert diaper after all. Now seems like there's a big mis it seems like there's a big misunderstanding. This just be one of my backup dancers. Hit it, cuz. Show him what you got. He's helping you? Can't say you understand, but you're not about to look a sexy, gorgeous gift clown in the mouth. Marvis wants you to dance for your life. You'll dance. You start to go to town, flossing, shooting. Whatever it is the kids are doing these days. A real contemporary breakdown. The crowd goes wild. Fortnite. Fortnite. <clears throat> Fuck! I can't find it. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Sorry to keep fucking interrupting. Hey guys, sorry I keep going off track. I know I'm gonna get a lot of YouTube comments saying I don't stay on topic, but... There you go. <clears throat> Things are really starting to look up for you until a deafening crack sounds through the air and the stage equipment starts to collapse. It all happens quickly. The bolts of all the stage scaffolding burst out of their settings. The lights catch fire, and one of the massive 100-foot screens behind the stage comes loose off its moorings. He looks mildly perturbed by this. you have been easily pancaked by the huge screen, if not for Marvis expertly clown-stepping you and himself out of the way. So, question. How much trouble would I be in on YouTube, and just in general, if I made the thumbnail be Fozzer and Marvis's dick. Half the crowd isn't too lucky. The big screen shatters when it hits the stage, raining a hundred foot area of trolls with vicious glass. Shiz. Ryan, if you value your channel. I don't. I don't value my channel. I'll do it. No, I won't do it. No, I won't do it. I'll find some way to hide it, but I won't do it. Don't look for it in the thumbnail. <coughs> As a mod, don't. Doodles. I'll do it. I won't do it. <laughs> right when things were getting started. But the sound equipment was all obliterated by the sudden collapse. Nobody can hear him but you. For a moment, your hero looks lost. Man, we better bounce, cuz. <clears throat> Marvis grabs you by your sweaty hand and runs. He takes you to safety in the performer's green room, which seems to be intact after the collapse of the stage, though the power's out. And I keep clicking it out. There we go. The room is filled with the clowns who performed earlier. They all look very confused and harried. Shit. Things are going to be madhouse out there for a while, so better to lay back here for a while. We go out there right now, we're going to get mobbed. Usually everyone be dead at 
the end of my concerts. I wouldn't make it out of there without having two pale with 1,000 teens otherwise. This is fucking... This is... This is hard to read. It's hard to fucking read. You're a little rattled to say the least. Marvis takes a good look at you. Fuck, man. You shiz yourself? You start to cry. You didn't bring up your con. You didn't bring your concert diaper. It's all right. Don't cry. You hardly the first buddy to shit themselves at one of my concerts. Ugh. I'm used to the smell. To be honest, it's comforting. Sniff and say, "Really? You wouldn't want to bring even the slightest inconvenience to his wonderful life." Yeah, I'll let it cook. Bring it in, Broheim. Bring it in. The two of you share a nice, maladurous hug. It's hard for you to understand what's going on. Why did Marvis save you, anyway? I saw you was hanging out with that blue bro who's always trying to get his snuff shoot up with me and my jugs, shiz holes. And then you're trying to make real run at me. Gotta say, that's brave. Gotta ask a buddy where they got the bulge rods to try and pull something like that. Spec. Oh, well, it really wasn't much of a stunt. You were going along with your friend's ludicrous plan to try and scam him into a friendship under false pretenses. But it was a really bad plan, and your friend was killed on the spot immediately, and now you're pretty sure you're cosmically fated to die due to making a non-canonical decision. What do you mean, non-canon? All this be non-canon, fam. What can it even mean to be non-canonical, when in the context of an inherently extra-canonical framework... You're not sure, but you definitely have the sense that some of the decisions within the simulation carry greater values of truth and relevance than others. And the linear progression of events is rigorously enforced by obligate narrative flow or the privileges these actions most smoothly facilitate the designs of the story's architect. Sorry? But I say you the architect for your own fate. Inspiring a sermon as Marvis may be splitting. Uh, inspiring a sermon as Marvis may be spitting. His wise pontifications are interrupted when a clown in the back of the green room knocks over a water cooler. This gets the other clown who was talking to him really pissed. And they start duking it out. It starts a chain reaction that pulls all the other high bloods into a whirling blade picture of clown carnage. Man, what the fuck is going on? It's like you said. You've made a mistake, and the essence of the timeline won't rest until it's put things right. You can feel it's happened before, and it'll happen again. Well, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Come on, Troll Nostradamus, let's skeet shoot. Let's skeet scoot. <laughs> Even the inescapability of your own denies consumes you, and you can't bring yourself to deny him. Follow him out of the green room, fleeing before the clown fight can pull you into the grind you to bits. We're trying to run from the fate of the story to have a bad ending. Out here, you're the only one who has, who has, to, you're the only one who has to help Marvis. In the open air, it's an unending possession of teens' quick time events. Some of them are carrying buckets. Oh boy, you just need to keep punching them out until you finally make it to this rich guy clown limbo. Is that limbo or limo? Limo. <laughs> the driver is nowhere to be seen, so Marvis gets behind the wheel and you hightail it out of there. You stick your head out the window and look back. There's a nasty storm brewing in the distance. I have, I, I know somewhere we'll be safe. Make sure to secure your seatbelt. After dodging at least three fallen trees, a wayward deer loses, and a lightning strike that blasts the hood off the vehicle right off, Marvis brings you to Clown Church. This is... This is... Just... They're, they, like, the story is trying to kill the player. Can't say this place is high on your list of venues you wanted to visit again, but this thing is fucking budget. <laughs> what? Wait! You can't say this place is high on your list of venues you wanted to visit again, but this was this, this... But this place is a fucking budget! He's talking about the story. 
The friend sim has a budget. Whatever bullshit power that's coming after you will have, have no reach here. This be howled, howled ground, biznatch. Marvis leaves the limo on the lawn of the church. Just if you will hurry out. Just in time because it explodes not two seconds after you're out the door. By instinct, Marvis shields you from the fiery blast of this body. Everything's t the world is trying to kill. Ha! Oh no, Marvis. No, you beautiful soul. Destroyed by guilt. How could someone so tremendous bring themselves such harm for someone so mean meaningless as you? Drag Marvis's burned, scorched body into Clown Church, and you collapse as soon as you're past the threshold. You start weeping. Shiz, fam. I ain't dead. Just a little toasty. You ain't gotta cry about it. Damn. Oh, okay. Help. You help him up and bolt the door behind you. He was right. You do feel safe in here. Nothing is collapsing. Nobody is being stricken with a hysterical urge to start a fight. It's not even a single fire happening anywhere. The mirthful messiahs be protecting us, buddy. Stay frosty, all right. You help Marvis over to sit down in one of the pews. You settle in next to him and gaze up at the imposing architecture. It's not all so bad. There's beauty here. The beauty in being a clown, too. You're starting to see. Maybe you're even starting to believe? No, I, I heard the volume 19 name. 19, 17. I heard the volume 17 name. I think it's going to be Lonk and Daria from what it sounds like. That'll be dope. Turn to look at Marvis, and his face is ashen with slick with sweat. <laughs> Think that dip in the grill I had hurt a bit more than I thought. 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 Your heart drops in your chest. You ask if he's going to be all right. As long as we stay in here, we all right. But can you really stay inside Clown Church forever? You know down to your bones that even if you do, it doesn't matter. It's something about the air. You can't really describe it. Everything just starts to press down, down, down. Like you and everything around you is sinking implacably into the earth. But the ground is coming up to meet you, too. You start to perspire. Pressure leaves you weak. You slump against Marvis's shoulder. You feel so insubstantial. Like, the entire concept of your existence is struggling to erase itself. You know this isn't something you can fight. But you're giving up just like that? You don't know what else you can do. This isn't how things are supposed to go. This isn't how things can be. You can't exist like this. It depends on what you mean, what it means to exist, fam. Depending on how you look at it, every branch... I've just stopped the voice, because this is so hard to read. Depending on how hard you look at it, every branch of the timeline be fundamental to the metatextual meta structure of the essence of existence itself. Even an incident that falls outside of strict confines of canonically continuity contributes to a meta-consciousness that built by... and can even be said to be at its most essential level defined primarily by the extra-textual exchange of interpretation by those who observe it. Thanks, Marvis! Each path, a translucent fragment of the via mirror the via mirror and some distorting or magnifying certain aspects of the ultimate reality folds itself invisibly into the fabric of that reality. <laughs> what if he turns out to be a fucking thief of time? Jesus Christ. It's self immeasurable and intangible, but the space it once occupied indelible. The observation of irreality can inform how reality is to be interpreted, even if ad ir irreality doesn't satisfy even a cursory standard of legitimacy. And the act of contri contributing and continuing... Ugh. Ugh! Can it still provide definition to that very integrity it defies? Even if what's going down here can't be said to be true, that doesn't mean we are me meaningless. Turn up. Hmm. You don't know about all that, but you tell Marvis... You're glad to be... You're glad he's here with you. Marvis smiles and puts his arm around your shoulders. In spite of it all, he makes you feel real. You stare into the effervescing panes of clown glass as they shift and 
scintillating your vision. Things are coming apart at the seams. Some atomic concepts scream from the insides of your ears, and the infinity of pure dimension blossoms between the tenuous threads holding the essence of your being together. The terminality of paradox space reaches into you from the inside out and takes hold of reality in its inescapable grasp. Continuity inverts and cascades into a cataclysmic fractal. What happens will happen, and what can't must not. No measure of hubris from man or god or clown can stymie the cosmic imposition of truth. Close your eyes just for a moment, but when you open them, there's nothing to see at all. Okay. At least that wasn't really a bad ending. Oh, oh, okay. This was a good ending, because Zebra did die. And Marvis didn't, so. Clown's alright. Ark was weird. That arc was very, very fucking weird. Not my favorite. But it was... I love that clown boy. Alright. What do you mean it's... <laughs> Snivy, we already did the... We already did, Fazer. I'm sorry. Alright, so, we had uh, Aisha's dad, did Fazer, and V did Marvis. Yeah, you missed it, bud. You gotta go back and watch it. It's pretty good. It's been more than two hours. It must have been more than two hours. Has it really only been two hours? That doesn't seem right. It's gotta be like two and a half hours at least. Eight thousand words. Christ. Wow. Two hours and twenty minutes ish. Jesus Christ. Okay. Background artists. Oh, we got a new background artist for artist for this one. CJ Walker. Okay, background artists, yes, character artists, yes. Kim. Ending illustrations. CJ Walker again. Alright. Let's see what let's see if James cooked up any good ones. Still hate it. <laughs> Fazer's theme. Graveyard shift. Play the route and then tweet <laughs> about how good the title is. Quality. Bye Aisha. Clown fucker. James Roach and Toby Fox. Clown fucker. No shit. Yeah, you missed it. Alright, we are we are done. We are done. That was a long one. That was a long one. Okay. Uh I will. I'm, I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm a hero. Yeah. I'm something. <laughs> I'm something. I'm a fool. Check the zebras from Twitter. Yes, I, I saw there were there were a few. If you have any art, send it over. See you in two weeks, punks.